Hi. So in this video, I would like to quickly go through how to set up and install Cedar. Cedar is a C++ library that we have developed at the Institute for Neural Computation to build dynamic field theory architectures. And it has a graphical user, in user interface, which um, you can see it kind of looks like this. And you can um, build and simulate and maintain dynamic field theory architectures by drag and drop and basically clicking uh, on icons and setting parameters, which is um, which a nice, it's a nice workflow uh, if you, once you have all the concepts um, understood because you don't have to go through, uh, you know, all the minute details of implementation every time you want to generate an architecture. So um, installing really is only downloading uh, the software by now. So um, you can go to our website, which is uh, cedar.ini.rub.de. Um, this is the this is the homepage, and go to the download page, and um, you will see here three different categories: pre-built apps virtual machine and source code and um, I'll only go through the pre-built apps here but I'll mention these other two uh, versions so pre-built apps uh, are basically completely compiled versions for different um, operating systems so you can see down here a list for uh, different versions of Linux um, all, all these are Linux versions and then there's a version for Mac OS and one for Windows um, and you can download these here and basically just run what you've downloaded. Um, now these these versions are only supported for 60 uh, so, sorry 64-bit operating systems. If you do have an older system, a 32-bit bit operating system, or some kind of version where these don't run, um, you will have to use a different version here. Um, either download a whole virtual machine which will give you um, a virtual machine which runs on, on VirtualBox uh, which has Cedar and all the libraries installed on it um, and you can run this wherever you have VirtualBox or you could go to the source code um, Cedar is an open source project and you can download the source code and compile it um, which is kind of a well let's say complicated process um, but it's not impossible. It's uh, probably easiest on a on a Linux machine, but it obviously can be compiled on on Mac OS and, and Windows. Um, I might do another video on this, but for now, let's stick maybe to the pre-built apps. So I'm running here a, a Linux. This is elementary OS, and I have to download this version, which I'm just going to click, and it's. Uh, now downloading um, this this Linux version and um, then we can just basically run that um, and see what we can do with this so this is taking a little bit of time um, it will end up here in my uh, in my downloads folder once it's done there it is so let's maybe um, copy this into some folder. doesn't really matter. Um, put this here and then uncompress it. How does that work? Oh, oh perfect. So we'll do this in the... Sorry. So you, you basically just have to uncompress this. Um, apparently I don't have a tool for this. So uh, let's do this. Okay, so now it's it's uncompressed, and you can see here uh, it creates this folder, and in there is another folder called Cedar uh, with all the stuff that you need. But you really only have to execute this Cedar dot app um, thing, and it opens Cedar. So this is the Cedar graphical user interface. And um, I'll 
very quickly explain what the different parts are. So in here, the white um, canvas is the place where you will build your architecture, basically. What you can do is drag um, different elements from up here, uh, from this steps thing, um, down into the canvas and, for instance, create uh, instances of a field or of some input and uh, some operations down here. Um, now there are different categories up here of things that you can use. Um, we'll stick to uh, just a few for for this video. So let's maybe start by creating a field, which is this neural field icon here. I I drag it onto this canvas and drop it there. And now this is an instantiation of a field. If you click on this with a, with the left button, you will find on the right side here in this properties pane um, all kinds of parameters that you can set for this field. So the dimensionality, the sizes with which it's sampled. So this is now a two-dimensional field which um, is sampled 50 by 50, time scale, resting level, and, and so on. You, you will have to understand all the concepts of dynamic field theory and the, the equation to really understand what, what these mean, but if you do, you could probably find your way around this. Um, you can also set the kernels that, you're, uh, that you want to use in, in this field and so on. So, um, and then what you can do is a right click on this, on this icon here and choose either a field plot, one of these predefined plots, or you can go into plot and then make plots of um, various things like only the activation or the output, the sigmoid activation. Um, or just look at the kernel and so on. So let's maybe do the field plot, which has a number of different things. And what you can see here now is um, color-coded plots of the activation. So this is the two-dimensional field that we see here. This is the, the sum of inputs. This is the actual activation. This is the output on the sigmoid activation. Um, it's not doing anything right now because the simulation hasn't really started so I can start the simulation by clicking on this play button up here and you can now see that there is some kind of change in the activation. This is noise. If you look at um, what these colors stand for, so these are values between minus 5.1 and minus 5, so very, uh, very small changes. Um, this is a noise um, parameter that I can set here, so there's just a little bit of noise on it. Uh, what we can now do is add some input to this field. So as you can see, there's no input. Uh, we can drag, for instance, a Gaussian input in here. Now this is the Gaussian. Um, you can also move things around if you like. And um, if you click on the Gaussian, you will see that um, there are also a number of uh, parameters. It's by default also two-dimensional, has the sizes of 50 and 50 has a certain amplitude and the center of the Gaussian. So if we look, we also right click on this Gaussian here um, and say plot all. We will see that there is, by default, um, the Gaussian is like in this upper left corner. Um, and now we can change the parameter here. With the center, I control where the center of the Gaussian is. So if I, if I slide this up here, this seems to be the y-axis, this is the x-axis. Um, then I can change the amplitude. You will only see the change uh, here. So now the amplitude is 1. If I go higher, uh, you'll see that this grows. So maybe let's put that to 3.5. And this is now going to become the input to the neural field. And to make it an input, we can draw connections. And we use these little bubbles. So there's an output bubble here um, and here, and an input bubble only on the field. We can connect any output um, with matching dimensionality and size to any input. So uh, we can draw a connection here. You can see that this, is, this input turns green, uh, signaling that this will actually work and we can um, make the connection. You can see the, co the connection is also green, so this is all working. Um, and then you can see that here, 
for the field, the input uh, is now this, this Gaussian. Um, now since the resting level of the field is at minus 5 and the Gaussian, the strength of the Gaussian, the amplitude is at 3.5, um, this input does not pierce the threshold at 0. So the field in its entirety is still below threshold. Okay, This also means that there is no output, um, so the sigmoid activation is pretty much zero everywhere. And there's also no interaction um, in the field, because the interaction only really kicks in uh, if something is above the threshold. So let's maybe increase the, sh the strength here of the, of the Gaussian to something larger, um, maybe to six or seven. Um, and you can see now that um, the value here has risen to above the threshold, to 2.1. So the peak is now piercing the threshold. And you can see that at this point, I actually have an output of, of 1. So um, there is now a peak um, at this position where the Gaussian is. And um, if I go into the field, I, I have a look at the... Um, the, the kernels here I won't go into detail, but um, you know I can I can change um, the interaction and make the make make the uh, excitation stronger. And you could see that there uh, was a little bit of change here. So um, just by changing the the kernel within the field, I can I can change how the activation changes here. Okay, now. Um, Cedar does have a lot of different functions, and um, I will probably do another video um, on you know a whole bunch of things that you can do. But this should get you started to you know use it. Um, there are some things maybe I can say. So you can um, pause, start, and pause the uh, the simulation on this button. You can reset everything. You know something goes really wrong with with the activation. You can reset it with this button. Um, you can also, if if it is running, um, change the the simulation speed with a slider. So if you want to look at something how it develops um, in detail, you can you know slow it down um, or even speed it up um, to a limit. Um, you can also, if if you like. Um, not have it run continuously, but set uh, a step size of in milliseconds, and then iterate through it by clicking on this button here, and it will advance by by these milliseconds. Um, yeah. So one thing you could do is just you know play around with this, um, drag some fields down here, and connect them up, and see what works and what doesn't. Um, look at the plots and try to see whether you can. Uh, understand what is happening, and the interesting cases are probably when you don't understand when something happened, uh, when something is is happening, and um, have a look at that and, and try to try to have some fun with it. Okay. Um,